at the end of this week, many thousands of people will be getting ready to celebrate the Queen's 90th birthday with street parties and other events. No doubt there'll be bunting, a buffet, a beer, or two, or three. But when it comes to royal birthdays, we're being reminded if we want to do it properly, there are certain rules of etiquette, don't you know, that you have to follow. Yes, there are indeed. And we're very lucky that the country's leading expert in etiquette lives right here in the northwest. And our reporter, Matt Price, has been to meet him. William Hansen is proud to be posh, a master when it comes to good manners. Quite a privilege then perhaps that he's taken time out to teach us just how and how not to take afternoon tea. So now that we've sat down, we need to place the napkin on our lap. It's been folded into a decorative shape, so it's placed in the middle. We're going to unfold it and place it on the lap with the crease facing us. When we then come to pick up our cup of tea, which is a cup of tea, not a mug, please, uh, we pick up the saucer and we hold the teacup, pinching with our thumb and our forefinger between the handle, using our middle finger to support. Through Admiralty Arch comes the coach to a roar of welcome from the... This very precise way of behaving goes way back in time, much further than the Queen's coronation in 1953. And with dozens of us planning street parties this year for Her Majesty's 90th birthday, it's a rule book which should keep us on the right side of the royals. If you meet Her Majesty the Queen, you refer to her as Your Majesty followed by ma'am, and that's ma'am as in ham and not ma'am as in farm. William's now working with the Hilton Hotel to teach people good etiquette, a pinch teacup, a curtsy and a bow. But time for a test. Do people really know how to wear a napkin? I just think I'd lay it on my lap. Lay it on your lap like that? Yes. Yes. It's good, oh, but it's is not... It not like that? No, that's definitely not right. <laughs> I'd probably just do that so it didn't blow away. Down the collar. It's a classy technique. It's not quite right. We fold it here. Yeah. Like here. So if you have a dirty hand, so you clean it here. You are the first person to get it right. Well done. For William, good etiquette is essential and he'd like us to follow these rules explicitly. It's an occupational hazard that I may be out socially with a group of friends or family and see someone, for example, using a knife on their bread roll where they should be breaking it. The politeness paradox says that I can't actually say anything, but inside I'm dying. If you ask me, the easiest thing, just don't invite him out for afternoon tea. Matt Price, ITV News. And we're delighted to say William Hansen's here now. We, we did invite him out, but is that advice people take a lot, not to invite you out? Are they too scared? You're going to pick holes in things? Yes, the number of dinner parties I've gone to does, does sort of... If you drop off each with each year. But I, I host a lot, so I, I get to see friends that way. You're boosting it the other way round. Mm. Yeah, <laughs> trying to. Now, I want to ask you about ham and mam and mam yes. and farm. William, that, not that many of us are actually going to get to meet the Queen. Mm -hmm. How important is it to have this knowledge? Well, I think a lot of people, when they do get to meet any member of the royal family, because it's not just the, the Queen you call ma'am, it's all other female members of the royal family and ma'am, um, you can get very flustered. So knowing what these rules are in advance will relax you. It will give you confidence. And that is predominantly Really? Are you sure I about teach. that? I think it will. I, th I mean, we've all seen footage of people doing a curtsy that's far too low and tripping over and, and making an idiot of themselves in front of the monarch. So actually knowing what to call uh, Her Majesty or any other member of the royal family is, is essential, I think. Some people say this is all outdated nonsense. Afternoon tea aside, does it really matter if it's a cup or a mug or how many fingers you use to hold the thing? Well, yes, you know, there are a lot of rules and history and it, it reflects on, on our heritage as a country. And m nine times out of ten, everything, there is the common sense about things. Mugs are quite informal. For afternoon tea, it's a fairly formal uh, event and so we want a nice uh, cup and saucer. Please, nothing, you know, chunky mugs, pretty awful. Uh, so we're not going to have those. Um, and, and yes, you know, the, you hold the, the teacup in a certain way, but so it, the handle is shaped to, to help you hold it. And for, for safety, predominantly, you're holding something that's got fairly hot liquid inside. <laughs> well, look, the tea aside, because mm. the tea's not the important bit in no. see, obviously. The important bit is the scone or the scone. Mm. Yeah. Um, scone? Well, scone, scone, really. Her Majesty says scone, because once it's scone, it's scone. <laughs> <laughs> boom, boom. <laughs> 
Yes, that's the joke. <laughs> and gel more cream first. What's a crack dasket? Well, it, it, I have to say, here in the northwest, you can actually do whatever you like. It's in Cornwall and Devon that they get rather uh, hot under the collar about this. Okay. Cornish clotted cream goes on second, jam on first. Devonshire clotted cream, they like to put it on first. So down there, it is a matter of national importance. Shouldn't you just smother the thing and eat it? <laughs> no, you're going to delicately do it, please. Delicately? Just a little bit. It's a scone, you want to, just want to, you want to eat it, get it done with. No, no, delicate. You know, afternoon tea is enjoyed over about an hour and a half to two hours. So there's no need to rush. Get indigestion. You let me drop my pen now because I'm laughing so much. I say just scoff it as quickly as possible, yeah, William. Thank you. you so much for coming in to chat to us today. It's been lovely.